What's going on everyone? This is Alex USA Days. Uh, so recently I've been reading a story about a family couple that had been laid off. Uh, they worked both worked as a QA engineers and they lost their jobs, right? And I was wondering in general, how bad is the market right now? How hard is it to find a job? So I looked at the uh, LinkedIn, we're going to look at some of the jobs available and I'm going to tell my general thoughts on what's going on. So this story and reading more stories like that kind of shows that there are layoffs happening. A lot of the uh, layoffs are related to the market condition and uh, bigger companies hire a lot of people. They were over hiring. Uh, they were trying to get as much talent as possible, overpaying salaries. And essentially right now they're cutting off all of that, trying to save their profit margins. Um, a lot of big companies are worried that the recession is going to come and they're trying to save money as much as possible. So this is why they're letting go of a lot of tech workers, uh, developers and quality assurance uh, engineers included. So this is one thing. And I think it mainly affects bigger companies like Facebook, Amazon and so on. Um, in regards of startups, startups are still hiring and I see a lot of startups, you know, the jobs are there. So if the company has the budget, they have planned hiring stuff, they have finances, most likely they have the budget for a year. Some companies are financed for a couple more years to run through uh, the cash that they have and they keep on hiring to make sure that the work keeps uh, going forward. So those companies, I don't think they're laying off. There's no point of saving costs. Uh, it's more important to complete the product they already paid for. Uh, they have finances. So unless they're already um, outside of investment phase and actually making money and it's affected their profits uh the overall economic situation affecting profits then they might be laid off but normally uh smaller companies the if they are in the startup phase they uh they work with capital that was uh, invested in them so everything kind of planned in terms of hiring and how many people are going to be on staff uh, so lay, layoffs, they're unlikely uh, unless we're going to hit like a really bad recession. Uh, what's happening in the bigger companies, uh, they are laying off. And um, I've also heard about practices that coming from uh, bigger companies, uh, employees coming from the bigger companies to like mid-level companies trying to bring practices that are in uh, bigger companies. And uh, a lot of that is misinterpretation of the practices and how they're supposed to be. And I've read a couple of stories like that. And um, there was even a, a, a big post about that. There's really no need in quality assurance. Uh, developers can test themselves. And this is somehow was presented as a shift left approach. So essentially, you know, there's no need to have a queue engineer and staff. Uh, developers can both write code. Uh, they can write automation for that code. They can also test and so on and so on. Um, so I think there is a general misunderstanding from some of the people coming like from bigger companies, bringing those practices uh, that shift left approach is not about getting rid of QA. So if you get rid of QA sooner or later, it's going to bite you back. Uh, at some point, you're going to lose competition because your product is going to be uh, not as good as your competitors because they will have proper testing and you will not. Uh, devs might cut corners. Uh, they might not find things because they've written the code themselves. It's kind of hard to go into the code and find a problem. If you knew it existed, you probably caught it while you were creating the code, right? So um, so they bring the practices, calling it shift left or uh, becoming even more agile than they are. And with those practices, they essentially saying that developers should be testing, uh, writing codes, looking through the acceptance criteria and creating tests based on those, which is not what shift left is about. So shift left is essentially when you bring in QA quality assurance closer to the development stage. So that means that QA engineers participate in groomings in the early uh, discussions of the stories and features. And based on those discussions, they start working on test cases, test plans. Uh, so once the stories are ready, they're partially kind of delivered to quality assurance where they verify them early on. So developers uh, and QA kind of work closer hand in hand on the, on the process of delivering the product. It does not mean we're going to cut off QA and developers are going to test. That's completely wrong. Um, 
the white's gonna bite back because if you will cut quality assurance and everything gonna be uh, dependent on developers, how will you actually verify that your product is good enough? Who will be your QA if you're cutting off QA? Uh, developers uh, gonna lose time because they will be split into testing and coding. And most likely if uh, there is a pressure to deliver on time, they're gonna cut corners and the corners they're gonna cut will be about verifying products. So they're just gonna rubber stamp it and say, hey, it looks good. Uh, and then what will happen, your customers will become uh, your QA engineers. They will find issues, they'll report back, back, uh, back to you and you will lose your customer base. So that's uh, that might not be as important in uh, companies that don't deliver critical products, uh, so like entertainment, but companies that actually deliver uh, products that deal with high regulations, that have uh, certain standards, that have quality control, you know, uh, think about it in the way if you go to a factory and all of a sudden when you start manufacturing, you will uh, get rid of all 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 of the quality assurance for your manufacturing so there will be no quality control whatever comes out of the uh, conveyor belt uh, gets shipped to the customers there is a known margin of uh, failing products that are going to be manufactured like maybe four three percent maybe one percent doesn't matter uh, but the point of quality control to capture that and not get them out out of factory so they go to the customer right so you prevent bad feedbacks you prevent returns uh, and the same thing applies in the software right so if you're not going to have this step you're not going to have this process you're going to deliver eventually deliver bad product or bad features and that's going to affect your uh, reputation uh, again maybe not as important in products that are entertainment products but probably more important products that have high regulations or deal with hardware and software uh, in, and they are in regulated industries like finances or uh, some government sectors and so on. Um, so I don't see cutting QA beneficial, right? Because at some point, some major problem is going to happen because of that. And maybe, uh, you know, money going to get lost, personal information going to get leaked out or uh you know maybe even companies gonna go bankrupt because of the issues that were not caught and the customers affected were affected by those issues uh can developers test i think they can but shift left is not about getting rid of qa it's about getting qa process closer to the development and then when um the employees from bigger companies come to the mid-level companies bringing the practices that okay we're gonna get rid of qa they are kind of lying because even though they might not have quality assurance on staff that is working full-time, uh, they have tons and tons of outsourced cheaper QA that have been having that on staff, but they would uh, just use third-party services like Utest or uh, other uh, beta services providers of where you have crowd testing and they would still test it just for the fraction of it, of, uh, of the price uh, leave they would have like a full-time QS staff, the same amount of people testing on board. Uh, now, some industries can do that. Uh, again, mostly entertainment. Uh, other industries can't because there's a lot of different regulations involved if you have people from outside of your country working with personal information and finances and so on. Uh, so again, I think that's overall, there, that is a trend in terms of uh, cutting down QA and in general tech workers in bigger companies. I don't think that's the trend that's happening in mid companies uh, or uh, startups. Now, was the recession, possible recession, it might get worse, but uh, we're going to take a look at some jobs available right now. And uh, I think, yes, uh, you know, it is harder to find jobs, but if you will apply more and apply fresh on daily updates, whatever comes out today, you're going to immediately refresh it, uh, looking at the day where the jobs were released and apply daily. Uh, it's going to be more of a like first come, first serve. If you're one of the first candidates, you're going to get in the pipeline first. If your resume is appropriate and uh, it doesn't look like a 
generated resume, like when they see thousands and thousands of save formats, they're just going to ban those resumes. Like if you have proper resume with a good description of your skills, with a highlight uh, of what you were doing, with an experience that is listed and easy to go through and understand, um, and it looks like it's natural resume, not generated, then you're going to get in the pipeline first and there's high chances you're going to get the job. Um, so let's take a look at LinkedIn. I just put software quality assurance in the United States. Uh, I'm going to update date posted in the past 24 hours. So in the past 24 hours, it shows about 3,200 jobs. Um, and of course, uh, you know, there, it's a mix of on-site, remote, hybrid. It's a mix of uh, full-time, part-time, and so on. I don't want to get too specific, but one of the filters that I want to apply that allows you to apply faster is easy apply. So you can apply within a couple of clicks. So let's just do that. So with easy apply in the past 24 hours, we see 784 jobs in quality assurance. Um, on-site, quality insurance engineer level two from 65 to 100K. Test coordinator, 80K to 85 on site, 70 to 120 on site, automation engineer, mobile software quality assurance tester, uh, hybrid, quality manager on site, 120, 150 quality assurance manager on site, quality manager, uh, okay, hybrid, hybrid, 140, 175. VP compliance QA analyst, uh, senior QA analyst, hybrid, manual QA on site contract, 3540K. So it's uh, 70 to 80, 35 an hour, 40 an hour. It's about uh, 80K, right? Now, I've also seen posts that like if you have a job posting, there will be there will be uh, hundreds of people applying. So within the last 24 hours, if we'll start clicking through uh, jobs, so here's manual on site contract, 20 applicants, uh, 26 applicants, 15 applicants, five, quad assurance on site, 67, 14. So if you're looking through recent jobs, the recent posting, and that there are most of them going to be on site, but on site, your competition is around 20 people. So if you're in the first 10 with your resume uh, properly formatted and not looking like it's generated by AI and, uh, you know, like thousands of other resumes, you will probably going to get in an interview. The only problem is that you will have to be working on site. So it has to be in your region. Uh, if we will switch from on-site to remote, I think this is where you're going to start seeing um, some stuff that looks weird. Okay, nine applicants, 11, 148. So this is what I've been uh, hearing about, that there's like hundreds and hundreds of applications. I think the reason for that, because it's a remote job and the recruiter is just spamming, uh, with applications that they have because they can uh, essentially put anyone who is within the U.S. or maybe not even the U.S. Uh, onto that position. Because with on-site, you'll have to have a candidate that can actually be on the job site. If you're off-site, you can just spam it and hopefully that your candidate is going to get through. So a lot of those things are not actual resumes that got in in the company looking at, but how many of those were sent or were clicked on, not necessarily they're going to actually get to the uh, to the HR because HR going to filter through those uh, applications and those resumes that look like they're fake or they're very similar to a bunch of others that being submitted. Uh, a lot of them are just kind of, you know, following the template. And they, if you take two of those resumes or three of those resumes out of hundreds being sent, and you compare them one to another, you won't see any difference except the person's name, right? So uh, that's a problem, that, but I think they're just spamming the, the jobs, possible jobs. Okay, four, 200, same thing. Uh, software engineer in test because it's remote, 100 applicants. If that would have been on the site, I am pretty sure it's gonna be about uh, 10 or 20 candidates. Uh, again, 200 applicants. Now, 
uh, does it mean you should not be applying to jobs that say remote? Absolutely not. I think if you, again, will be one of the first candidates, if this is uh, essentially uh, spam and your resume going to stand out, they're just going to not look at any of the resumes that are spam resumes and just going to go with yours. So you still have a chance for a re interview uh, for the position, right? You're going to be selected. Uh, because your resume will look real and not fake as the other resumes. 120, uh, 120, 135, again, 161 candidates. So so you have you pretty much have a couple options here, right? How to help you with the job process. Uh, one thing that you can do is look in the past 24 hours that for the jobs that are submitted you can also look in your local region if you're willing to work on site or hybrid and uh i mean with remote jobs you see there's a little bit a uh, weird thing happening with tons of applications being sent but i still think if you're going to apply uh within the first day and your resume going to look unique like you're a real person you will get prioritized and you will get an entry so uh, other layoffs in QA, yes, uh, in bigger companies because of the overall layoffs happening in tech, right? Uh, other tendency to kind of bring some uh, practices where QA is not needed, yes, uh, from those bigger companies, but I think it's not going to last uh, because in the long run, it's going to affect the businesses. Uh, so, and those tendencies first of all misinterpreted uh, shift left doesn't mean you get rid of qa it means qa gets closer to development that's the first thing and the second thing uh even if they work in full time in bigger companies claiming that we have no qa it's actually not true companies actually paying and outsource and testing uh to third parties it's just not as visible as if you had qa on site so testing is still happening Otherwise, you'd have you know issues all over the place. Um, and uh, is it possible to find a job still? I think it is. Uh, the only uh, difference is now that you have to monitor actively and apply daily and send uh, maybe tens, 20, 30, 50 uh, applications, resumes uh, to the freshly popping up positions. Because you see in the 24 hours, there were like, uh, what, 300 plus or 700 plus positions? Let me just double check. Uh, so if you remove, if you remove easy apply, it's in the past 24 hours, it's showing 3,200 results. Let's say they had, none of them are testing, even if it's a half of that 1,500, even if it's a 10%, you have a 320, uh, 320 positions in every day popping up uh, for quality assurance. So um, there is an impact, economical impact on the jobs, right? Uh, and getting the jobs, but is it possible to find jobs still? I think so. Let me know what you think. Uh, and hopefully this information is helpful. This was Alex, you said they said.